Okay, today we're going to work on a black and white image. So we have our image here on the screen. Now, first of all, before I clean up, uh, for our main image black and white, I usually clean up the skin a little bit. So on a shot like this, I'm going to duplicate the layer and then grab my patch tool. So you can see here the, the layer is duplicated and here we have the patch tool. So I'm just going to get rid of these little bits. I don't want to get rid of any beauty spots or anything that's, that's the person. just want to take out little spots. And again, I prefer to do it on a selective level like this. Uh, there are many different plugins and software now you can get to clean up the skin. Um, it's something you've got to be very careful of making it look too plasticky. So first of all, we just take out the large spots that we don't want in there, any little scars that she's asked us to take out. Okay, so if we go back to our, our layers, you can see we can put them in, we can take them out. Those spots, we don't want to put any of them back in, so we want to just take them out 100%. Okay, so if we get into another layer, okay, let's move around to the screen, and this these little creasy areas and things like that, we're going to just smooth out a little bit. Again, we get the patch tool and just drag it to a nice soft piece of skin. Again, these aren't model shots, so I'm not trying to make it look too plasticky. Uh, we can keep the freckles in this little area here little spots on the chin, just move them out to a nice fresh piece of skin. You can use a spot healing brush for this, a clone tool, patch tool, whichever one you like. And like I say, you can get many different plugins just to s smooth out the skin. There are many different ways of doing this. So if we go back to a layer, and you can see, and we just put them back in a little bit. We don't want it looking too false. So eye bags, again, let's just get that eye bag and just drag the whole thing out a little bit. And when I take eye bags, I always look to put a percentage of them back. You don't want to make the skin look too stretched. Okay, so it looks pretty rough now. We go back to the opacity. And we can just smooth that down by putting 50% back, something like that. And like I said, this shot's going to be worked on for black and white. So what I'm going to try and do now is just get my dodge tool again and just make it look nice and even nice and even on the tonal quality so I'm, make, I'm trying to make it look the tones look as even as I can lighten up the blues a little bit a little bit into the hair and that's pretty good okay then I simply just image adjustments black and white okay and that's how I find my grayscale file or make it grayscale in the first place and there are many different ways of making a black and white image you can desaturate channel mix many different plugins. If we go back on the black and white and go into our Color FX Pro, just takes a couple of seconds, black and white conversion up here. Okay, we've got different strengths, brightnesses, contrasts, filter colors that we can add. So different dimensions of black and white we can add to the subject here. So you can see that's pretty pretty nice as is. That's quite nice. A touch more contrast into there. A little less strength, maybe a little more brightness. Let that do its work. You know, that's not a million miles away from where we'd want it to be. Um, you know, we could work on that layer now and use that as our base black and white. Um, what I could do from that layer is just raise up the curves a little bit, just to give us a bit of brightness, and duplicate that layer down again and go to my layers palette here and add soft or hard light and this is what, again what gives us that depth and that punch and a little more heaviness in the shadows so soft light in there I can drag it down to about 60 percent and that will vary on depending on the tonal quality of the image on how much I take in and how much I leave out so I'll go back to my dodge tool a fairly large dodge tool just on the light areas I'm not being too specific here Okay, again, just touch more on the on the face and go back to my burn tool, quite a, a large burn tool again, and just a little vignette like I like to add around the shots. Just going to bring out the eyes a little bit, so again, we can work on another layer. So we go into the eyes, we duplicate our layer here. Okay, so if we go to our dodge tool first of all, and uh, quite a small dodge tool, just lighten up the whites. Line up the colour in the eyes here. 
Okay, go to our burn tool again, quite a small one. Just bring back the edge of the eye here. Just trying to make them both look the same because there's different amounts of light falling on each eye here. So the reflector is closer to this side of the face rather than this side, hence that's why this pupil in the eye and the iris in the eye are slightly lighter than this one. So I'm just trying to make them look nice and even. Okay, so maybe just darken down the inner bit. Again, nothing too crazily specific, just making it nice and balanced. If we go back out of that image and go back to our opacity, so you can see where the eyes look nice and punchy. So about 76% there. Flatten that back down again. And we can change it by our curves, levels, brightness, contrast. Again, many different ways we can do this. I know how I work with my lab, so a little bit of brightness into this and a little bit of contrast just gives me that punch but still keeping the nice tonal quality in the image again if this was going to print we can make this into a full frame so I'll make this into an 8 by 12 at 300 dpi drag over our frame where we want the crop to be and again I usually shoot full frame so I don't want to crop off too much of the image there's our 8 by 12 and the last thing we're going to do is sharpen the image so filter sharpen smart sharpen now we can go into the face here. I don't want to be sharpening on too much on this. So usually it's below a pixel. And we keep our sharpening amount around 30 to 60 mark. Again, if I'm if I'm using if I'm working on an image that's quite dramatically soft, then I'll have to be whacking up the sharpening considerably to bring it back. But we can keep it down quite nicely for this one. It's pretty sharp as it is. So around the 50 mark should be nice. It's a nice element of sharpening into that. And there we go, there's our original print, uh, nice and punchy, just how we want it. Uh, with all the tonal quality still there, we've got nice blacks, nice heavy shadows, nice nice grey mid-tones, some nice blacks in the face and the eyes, and we still kept the detail here. And that's it.